Dennis Moreland with Dennis Moreland Tire. And today we're in Weatherford, Texas at Lindy Birch Cutting Horses. And Lindy, we're glad to be here. Lindy is known as the first lady of cutting. She was the first woman to win the NCHA fraternity. She held the high score at the fraternity for a number of years. She was the first woman to win the NCHA World's Championship. She's over a $4 million rider, and she was the first woman president of the NCHA. She's put her whole life into cutting, and we're gonna talk about spurs and get a little information that everybody can use. Uh, you want a new pair of spurs, but you don't know exactly what to get. So maybe this will help you, and she's going to talk to you a little about how to use this spur. Mindy? Thanks, Dennis. It's a pleasure being here. I'm glad you came over and, and uh, talk, let's talk about spurs. I mean, they're an intricate uh, tool for, uh, for any trainer. Uh, I can speak about cutting horses. That's all I'm going to profess to speak about. But it, it's it's good to use a spur because in cutting, as you know, we don't we can't rein them and we can't really um, cue them with our hands like any other equine discipline. So spurs are, are pretty critical of having the right spur and how it how it fits. So the spurs we have here right now. The shank is probably the most important. So we'll talk about the shank, and then we'll talk about the rowel. But the shank starts off here at an inch and a half, a two inch, and a two and a half inch. So it kind of depends on your body type, the length of your legs, and how you ride. Um, and you, and the, the whole idea of spur is to be able to get in and get out. And it's probably more critical to be able to get out of that horse quick enough to get to that stop. And I'll, I'll explain a little bit more about that when I get on my horse. So they, you know, some women and, and shorter stature man would uh, would maybe want to have a little bit shorter shank or a, it, it just depends how you ride with your legs, if you're real close or if you ride away, away from your horse. Because the, the time it takes you to get in and get some contact with the horse, a lot of times is pretty, you know, it's pretty important in order to move a horse or to get out of a horse to get to that stop. So a long-legged person doesn't need to have a real long shank, probably a medium shank, like a two inch or inch and a half uh, would be, you know, adequate. And then a real short, short leg person that can't really get their foot turned and get to that horse very quick might need a little bit of a longer shank. But it's really your preference and when you start learning to ride, and ride well on a, on a horse in a show pen, you'll figure out where your feet lie and where and, and what you really need in order to, to maintain that balance on your horse, good riding position where you're staying away and staying out of, out of the horse's way, but still be able to help them when you need to. So that's what's kind of critical about the spur. I, I ride uh, a two inch and always have for as long as I can remember. Um, and then I have, I have several sets of spurs because I like to have different rowels in different situations and for different horses. Um, the rowels we see here, this is more like I ride, a, a 10 point. This is kind of a, this, this little rowel here is a good rowel for, for just daily use. You don't really get into a horse very hard, yet you can get your point across. Um, and then this 12 point rowel here is, is a good rowel. There's more surface area, so it's not as evasive as say an eight point or a six point would be. Um, but it, all these rowels are really good working rowels. It kind of, again, depends on your leg strength and what you're trying to do with your horse, what you've got what you've got to do. And your skill level. And your skill level. Very important. Um, and what I what I try to encourage people that I give lessons to um, novices or beginners is, um, you know, let's just start out with a kind of an average row. This would be a good row for them. Or a little cloverleaf row that isn't going to get them in a lot of trouble. 
but it's going to teach them when to use a horse and more importantly when to get out of that horse. Um, and, and then I've got to teach them that, you know, sometimes you you got to be careful what you ask for. If you, <laughs> if you kick one too hard or too often, you might kick them out of shape. You might kick them out of position of that cow. So, you know, as your skill level, as you point out, Dennis, improves, then, you know, you can ride with a less forgiving spur. But you can get your point across maybe a tad quicker and then get out with less effort. So I, I just think that um, it kind of depends what your, what your skill level is and what your athletic ability is on that horse. And then, you know, what, kind, what type of horse. I've had horses that are, are uh, real sensitive. And I can just kind of start with my calf, just squeeze my calf. And that sometimes is all I need. Sometimes I need a little bit more oomph on there, or uh, if I got to get a horse to a stop a little quicker on a tough cow, um, try to control it before I lose control of it. I might need a little bit more spur or a little bit more kick um, to get there. But again, that is totally something that I can control as a rider. I can I can kick pretty easy. I can squeeze with my calves. I can press. I can use one leg, I can use two legs, and I can use them a little stronger and get out. Or I can, I can kick them a little, couple of times and then get out. Um, so it, it, there's a whole range of, of, you know, kind of a menu, if you will, of what I have, you know, at my possession, at, you know, at, at my, what, whatever I kind of need to do to keep that horse in position with my legs. Um, that spur will allow me to do. And now we're going to get on a horse and talk about how to use the spur on the horse. Or use your legs. Thank you. You bet. On a cutting horse, you, you want to sit with your knees a little bent like I am in order to take up uh, shock absorption where you're not standing up in that saddle and you're not reaching. If, my strip for real long I'd be reaching for my stirrup that would affect my balance on top of the horse so so we like to ride with our stirrups you know and, and by some people's standards they'd be just a little bit short but that gives us a lot of ability to stay right in the middle of that saddle and not get off on the side of it so I have my feet my spurs are always my toes are turned out a little bit as you see them right now so I can get into her real quick or I can get out. And, and I can use my calf, like I'm using my calf a little bit right now, and she starts to move off. Um, and, and maybe that's enough. Or maybe I need to use my foot a little bit stronger and put that spur in her a little bit and have her move off. So, so I, can, I can adjust how hard or how easy I use my calf and my foot to attain whatever direction and how and how much speed I want her to use to get there. So if I ride like this with my toes in and kick, I never touch them at all with my spur. So it's important to kind of sit there like 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 a duck, kind of have your feet out out like that, splayed out a little bit so you can use your feet without moving the, uh, your upper body. So from your belt down, you know, you can move a little bit, but from your seat up, you should be sitting here pretty straight, stay balanced on that horse, be watching your cow out here, and, and, you, and I use my feet to supplement what that cow's telling my horse to do. What's more important, especially for a beginner, is to, when you use your spur, get back up. Your, your only break on that horse, unless you pick your hand up, is to quit riding. So, so quit, quit riding means get your feet out of that horse, get your spur out of that horse, and just sit there and let that horse come up underneath you and you stay on top of him to get to that stop. Thank you, Lindy. This has been very good. We appreciate you sharing this information. And I'm sure a lot of people will get a lot out of this little video. For more tips and to take a look at some of the country's finest handmade tack, 
log on to dmtac.com.